Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are here in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio getting ready to record episode number 232. We're going to talk about coaches' responsibility to understand where injuries come from, our role, and whether or not we can help prevent them, and just kind of awareness of some stuff that we should be paying attention to. So before we get into that, let's talk about our sponsors, the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats. Use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. And again, make sure you take advantage of that EFP20. That's a great way for you to support this podcast and save an additional 20% on an already great product. And also become a patron if you can. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. We're talking about five, ten, or twenty dollars a month. We've got a great group of hardcore patrons that have been with us for a long time. We would love to see that number continue to grow. We'd love to add some more people to the list. So if you can become one, become a patron, go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. So Don. One of the realities of uh, our game, fast pitch softball, is that injuries are almost built into the way the game is played. There's so many things about how we do things, whether it's the uh, acceleration, deceleration of the arm, whether it's all the twisting and turning that we do in hitting, if it's sliding and base running, if it's diving. There's about a million different things that happen in a softball game that can all lead to or be part of creating injuries. And for us as coaches, one of the things I wanted us to talk about a little bit is maybe what our responsibility is, how much should we be paying attention, how much should we be studying what we're doing to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And so, you know, one of the things that you know, made me really think about this, and when Stan suggested this as a topic that I thought was a really good one, I'm dealing with one of the players on, uh, that I work with now on lessons, and she's a hitter, pitcher, all-around good player. And she's been having some serious shoulder problems for quite some time, kind of battling back and forth in and out of the lineup, you know, feels great for a week and then she's out for two weeks and she plays for a month and then it flares up again and she's out. And the reason I thought this was such a worthwhile topic is at practice the other day, she dropped the ball, but her coaches really dropped the ball because this player who's been battling this shoulder issue for a very long time was put in a position where she felt obligated to do a drill that had her doing a whole lot of very long distance throwing. Should she have said, hey, remember, I'm the one that had shoulder surgery. I shouldn't be doing this. Of course, she should have done that too. Should mom or dad maybe have been on the sideline going, oh, wait a second, she can't be doing all this long throwing. She just had shoulder surgery six months ago or eight months ago, whatever it was. But they didn't do that because nobody wanted to step on the coach's toes. But the coach should have also been aware enough to know, wait a second. And we hope yeah. that we're all better. Right. Yeah. 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 Play, play, player X is the one that had shoulder surgery 10 months ago. Why am I putting her in this drill where she's got to be the pivot person on all these relay throws? Right. And doing, you know, 50 relay throws in a you know 25 minute period in practice when a player clearly is predisposed to having problems, has a history, has an injury, and aggravating the heck out of it. So she called me to cancel her lesson because her arm hurt so bad from practice that she knew she couldn't hit, knew she couldn't, you know, canceled her pitching lesson because she knew she couldn't pitch, and all because she didn't stand up and say, wait a second, I shouldn't be doing this, but also because the, the coach in question was not thinking or aware enough or responsible enough to understand that what we were asking players to do in practice today was really the wrong thing for a certain player to be doing. Tori, there's so many pieces to this that, uh, you know, that we could probably talk for an hour about it, but for the coaches that are working with these athletes, they do need to be in tune with what's going on with them. Not only what's going on with the operations with the therapy with the timelines and things like that but just about all the different activities that these kids are involved in and whether it's weight programs at school do we have anybody that's involved in uh you know weight class because when they're in those weight classes they're asking them to 
do one rep maxes yeah. and they're asking them to do front you know, squats and back yeah, squats to, and to, to snatches have, and all these different crazy yeah. explosive exercises. Right. And sometimes it's the football coach that's working with the softball team because they, you know, have the majority of the students in that particular class. And, um, but we need to be in tune and ask questions and talk and, and the kids have a responsibility too, to, to share the things that are going on as well. Um, just like you said, that it could have been very easily fixed at that mo- moment and said, you know, hey, I need to be the last person in the relay right? so that I'm just receiving the balls because I've had a, a long therapy day, you know, yesterday and I'm still in the process of getting back to 100%. Right. But the excitement of the coaches, the the opportunity to get outside, the weather's changed, it's better now. Right. You know, there's a lot of different things that are going on with all that. But uh, I think ultimately, if I'm in charge of making a team the best team I can make it, it's on me. I need to know what's going on with everybody, and I need to be responsible to make sure that the workload, when they're with me, is appropriate for what's happening in their world. Right. You know, whether it's, whether it's an injury or whether it's extra activities, maybe I'm, I've got softball camp because my high school coach is saying we've got, you know, we're working with the little ones and I'm in charge of you know, drills and throwing, and I'm throwing long fly balls for the drills that I'm uh, in charge of at, at camp. And there's just so many different things that are going on, and the kids are active, and they all want to appease, and they want to be a part of everything that everybody else is doing as well. So it's kind of a tricky mix. And, yep. you know, we're, we're talking about kids performing at 100% of their capabilities, so they're putting 100% effort in, and sometimes we have to save them from themselves right? because they want it so bad. So we as coaches have to be super in tune and we have to be watching. We have to make sure that they know that it's a, an open door scenario where, you know, hey, I've reached funny underneath the bed to grab my book bag and I pulled a muscle in my shoulder or it's strained or it feels yeah. funny or I slept on it funny or whatever. Right. There's so many things, right? Well, and I think, you know, the, the first part of this question is, yes, it is every coach's responsibility to understand the strains and issues that we're putting on the, on the human body just with our normal softball practicing, Routine. not even, not even yeah. thinking about the players that are injured or recovering or in therapy or whatever, because the mega practice where we're going to practice for five or six hours. Well, if you have a five hour practice and you have a kid making, you know, 250, 300 overhand throws, I don't care whether they're 20 feet, 50 feet, 200 feet. All of that is too much. Injured or not injured. If we're, you know, working on base running and we're sliding and we slide 25, 30, 40, 50 times, you know, whether it's on a piece of cardboard or on wet grass, or on a slip and slide, or whatever it is, we're asking players to do something that's uh, an unnatural thing that could potentially cause damage. You know, every time we throw the ball as hard as we can, we hurt our arm. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And so if we do that a whole bunch of times, we're hurting our arm. If we're, you know, doing a whole lot of different things that are, you know, putting a huge strain on our on our body, we've got to make sure that we're always paying attention to the fact that what we're asking players to do, and the players for the vast majority of them, are trying so hard to make us happy as coaches that they're going to do whatever we ask them to do. And all of a sudden we talk about push-ups and, and crunches and speed and agility and, and all this other stuff on top of all the throwing and all the sliding and all the hitting and all those different things. We just have to have awareness that what we're asking these players to do is fundamentally damaging to the body. And we have to make sure that we're finding a balance between how much we need to get done and how much potential damage we're causing. And that doesn't mean that every softball coach has to be an athletic trainer or has to understand, you know, all the physiology and all that stuff of everything that's happening. Or be afraid to work hard. We still have to work hard. Right. But we also have to know that when we throw a lot, that's bad for their arms. And if we're going to throw an awful lot, we're going to have problems and we're going to be creating more issues on down the road. So, so that's the first part of the equation. Coaches, it is your responsibility. You need to have enough knowledge and enough awareness to know that what you're asking players to do could potentially be causing the wear and tear types of injuries that we're talking about, or the potential for, you know, some sort of more, uh, you know, catastrophic thing. The second part of it is, is being aware enough about the situation of each individual player that you can customize that you can 
you know, change the routine, that you can have different things for different players. You know, one of the other traps that we all fall into is, well, everybody's got to do this drill. Well, if I don't let, if I make so-and-so do it, but I let somebody else not do it, that then I'm somehow favoring them. If it's a hard drill or a hard workout or a hard whatever, and I expect half the kids to do it, but I let half the kids not do it, then there's all this, you know, pettiness and stuff that goes on. But if I'm doing a good job as a coach, I'm explaining to everybody, well, the reason we have two different workouts today is Sally, Mary, and Joni all are coming off of shoulder surgeries in the last 18 months, and they can't do this. So they're doing this instead, right? Or that, you know, the reason we have, you know, these people doing these different drills, the reason that these same three kids aren't going to be the middle person in the relay throwing drill, because they shouldn't be doing that long throw over and over again. You know, having that conversation, you know, sharing that information, I think is important too. It's comfort for yeah. everybody. Yeah. But, but, and it also then puts that player at ease. Hey, coach knows I'm coming back from this injury. He's not going to be mad. He's not going to hold it against me. He's not going to bench me because I couldn't do this drill. And I think some of that stuff is, is all part of this equation. So it is part of everybody's responsibility from a coaching perspective. It's also part of the player's responsibility. We have to empower our players to be willing to tell us what's going on so that if something, as you said, Don, does hurt, even though it might seem weird, there's no real explanation for it. I know for sure that we grew up in a time that if we went to practice and said, coach, I broke my arm skiing. Yeah, tough it out. I I don't think I can do everything at practice today. We were more likely to pretend our arm wasn't broken because if our coach found out we broke our arm skiing, you'd be breaking other bones because he'd be so mad that we went skiing. Right. Right. Those of us that grew up in those hardcore days where coaches were, you know, so much more uh, tyrannical, I think, you know, sometimes we have to tone that down and remember like, that Tori, just... Tori, how is that my problem? Yeah, just because just we yeah. went through it doesn't mean that it's okay for us yeah. to put kids through it now. So it is our responsibility. We need to be aware. We need to be paying attention. We need to be willing to adjust. And again, I don't expect everybody to be a, a WebMD expert and to try to be, you know, coming up with therapy programs and stuff like that. But again, some of it can be preventive too. You know, we, we talk about, you know, making sure that the kids are warmed up properly, making sure that they're stretched properly, making sure that they're doing their, you know, arm work and their, you know, their band work and stuff like that in preparation to, to try to eliminate some of those injuries and I that think, kind of thing. I think that could stop a lot of this with really good, uh, really good habits in terms of our warm up. Strengthening a, a shoulder muscle is a big deal. And your shoulder muscle has muscle in the front, in the middle, and in the back. Right. And we talk about when we're throwing, the acceleration part of it is all the front part of the shoulder. And all the kids are doing push-ups at school. They do push-ups all the time. So we're strengthening that front part. But that smaller muscle in the back of your deltoid in your shoulder is the one that has to slow down whatever you can a crew going forward. Right. So if you can accelerate and, and pull forward really, really hard at, at a high rate, then you've got to be able to slow it down at a high rate. Right. And if you're expecting that muscle in the back just to magically do it, it's not going to happen. You've got to, you've got to strengthen it and, and be doing something to create some strength there to accommodate, uh, you know, what the front part of your shoulder can do. Right. So we got to be, we got to just be conscious of that stuff. Yeah. And I, and I think that goes for everything. We talk about core exercising and everybody goes crazy doing crunches, 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 crunches. And we create a really good, strong front part of our torso, but the back has to accommodate what the front can do. Right. So planks and, you know, good mornings or whatever, when we're doing lower back lifts and things like that, I mean, you got to do it. And as excited as we are to strengthen one part of it, we've got to hit that antagonist muscle and be able to... Uh, balance things out at a, at a high level. I mean, yeah. well, and, and but but even you know for the, you know the rec coach, the eight and under coach, the t-ball coach, starting off with a good plan to help kids understand, warm up well, and and prepare well. Something as simple as having a throwing program that starts off with stretching and band work, and you know a couple of things to make sure that your shoulder joint is really warmed up before you start throwing. It still shocks and amazes me how many teams I see that think of throwing as a warm-up activity. You know, they put on their shoes, they grab their glove, they grab a ball and a partner, and they go and use throwing as a a whole-body warm-up. 
again, depending upon the age of the kids, if they don't know any better, all of a sudden, you know, the eighth or tenth throw that they're making before their arms even close to really warm, they're throwing missiles back and forth at each other at at 100%. Mm -hmm. And then if we could help them learn some of that stuff early on, I think we'd go a long way. And and again... I think a lot of my life, I was oblivious to all this. Yeah, no. I mean, it didn't, that didn't compute. Right. It was just, you know, you're just in good shape because you're in good shape. You're right. an athlete. And and if you're if you're a coach that played back in our day, you know, where warming up was playing soft toss, overhand, throwing slight, you know, a little bit warmer, you know, a little, a little harder, bit of a jog and away and, you go. And, and boom, you're ready to go. Well, now we know a whole lot more. And again, so that comes back to our idea. How, how responsible are you as a coach? You can be a big part of the problem or a big part of the solution. Yeah. Be an exciting, innovative, you know, we're going to do things a little different kind yeah. of approach. Well, and one of the things I want to just throw in there too, because we, you know, we've got this new relationship with Mule Tech, and I know Mule Tech has some therapy bands and stuff like that in their catalog. You know, we don't talk about them uh, quite as much here on the Coach Prep podcast because, you know, they're technically sponsoring the Everything Fast Pitch podcast, but Mule Tech has this EFP10 discount that, that uh, they're offering us. And if you're looking for, some sort of therapy systems, you know, tools that you can use. They've got a lot of really good stuff that I would recommend. The bands, Tori, are super cool. It's just an easy clip. You clip it on the chain link fence and it's got two wristbands or ankle bands that you can strap around your wrists or ankles, or you can just slide your hands into them nice and neat and uh, do all different angles to fire and, and warm up that deltoid muscle. And, you know, over a long period of time, if that was just part of your routine, you'd be strengthening and, and really creating an injury prevention right. um, system for your for your kids and your group. And uh, what a great habit for a young player to get into. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I wish uh, that that was something. If, if nothing else comes from this discussion, coaches, make sure that we're coming up with a plan to do everything you can to help your players be as injury-proof as possible and try to make sure that you're planning a practice and that you're planning, planning things as much as you possibly can to take the strain off of them and and to you know be uh adjustable enough and flexible enough that you can make sure that everything that you're doing is part of the solution instead of part of the problem great topic stan tory i love right. it so that's going to wrap up number 232 please make sure you check out anderson bat take advantage of that efp20 discount go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch become a patron go to fastpitchprep.com order your square cuts training discs check out the youtube channel and all the blog posts And as always, please make sure you reach out to us with questions, comments, ideas, or suggestions at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. So for Coach Don McKinley and our producer, Stan Lewis, this is Coach Torrey. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.